my gosh, this is a lot of snow. <laughs> oh, wow. This is Flagstaff at, uh, well, it's like the end of May. And it is really snowing. It snowed all night and then it almost all melted and now it's snowing again. Oh my gosh. It's kind of beautiful though. I'm going to stand under the tree. <laughs> It is gorgeous. Oh. Chilly. Very chilly, but gorgeous. Oops, got a snowflake in my eye. I'm going to be blind. It is so nice out here this morning. <clears throat> Absolutely beautiful. I'm here in Walnut Canyon, just outside of Flagstaff. And I'm really just like one mile from the Walnut Canyon National Monument, which is right up the road here which we're gonna go here in about another hour or so. Just waiting for some friends to show up. Uh, some friends are gonna come and meet me and we're gonna go to Walnut Canyon together. But I just love this area, it's so beautiful. And right now it's a perfect temperature. Uh, it's unbelievable, but about a week ago it was snowing here. It snowed for a couple of days. <laughs> And now it'll probably get around 80. A couple of days ago, the engine light on my car came on and I was really, really concerned. Uh, it's very rare that my engine light comes on. And so I took it to an auto parts store here in Flagstaff. I don't remember the name, but there was a lady there who was super nice. She actually plugged in this little meter gauge thing and told me what the uh, signal was that was coming out of the engine. And the code that came out was for a transmission pressure module. It's a part that measures the pressure in your transmission. And of course, I was very concerned about that because, yeah, if you mess up your transmission, that's gotta be one of the most expensive 
fixes you can make and I didn't want to mess up my transmission uh, I told Ren and Ren was like oh I can fix that and I was like oh I don't think so <laughs> and she's like no no I can fix that I was like okay it seemed kind of complex anyway we did a Google on it and there was actually a YouTube video it was a YouTube video that showed how to pull out that little part it was a module about that big and so Ren got busy she just started pulling parts out of the engine well as it turns out <laughs> I had a vole nest in my engine yeah it was a, a mice or a vole nest and I could tell that that nest came from the Northwest because it was made out of moss. It was made out of Northwest moss. I'm positive. <laughs> anyway, what was really great was that um, the module was fine. It was the wires had all been chewed on and it just took about a year or so for them to finally, for the last little bit of copper wire to fall loose and come undone completely. But that little vole had chewed on all the little wires in there. And you could look at the nest and there was all the little blue and red colors from the wires, plus all the copper. There was little bits of copper inside the nest as well. Anyway, Ren, she was awesome. She just fixed it right up. She had no problem. I actually had suggested going to get a wiring harness, but a, that apparently would be much more difficult because the wiring harness is this huge labyrinthian thing that goes to multiple spots. Well, she just pulled out a soldering iron and and meticulously and very carefully got that wire all hooked up and all the codes were cleared. My car is perfect now. <laughs> I'm so grateful for friends. I can't, you know, it just blows me away the things my friends can do. They're so talented. So, yeah, once again, very, very grateful. Uh, good coffee. I don't know if you can hear in the background, there's all these, like, buzzing insects. And for a long time, I couldn't find one. I couldn't see what they were, and... So yesterday I finally was hunting in a little tree right next to my camper and and I found one and I think they're cicadas. I think that's what they're called. They're kind of cool. I like finding all the little critters that live around me when I come to a place. I found a, a horny toad, a lizard, right on the road right there. Oh, those things are so cute. I didn't bother it too much, but uh, man, I love... Those little horny toad lizards, they're so cool. Well, coffee's done. And I have to get ready to go, so I'm going to go brush my teeth. And get ready to head up to Walnut Canyon. <laughs> All right, we're road trip. Woo -hoo, woo
are at Walnut Canyon. Came down here with some friends today. And this is an amazing place. This is a Sinawa Indian settlement. So right here is a fairly intact dwelling and it's amazing. So as you can see, the doorway is very small. I mean, they would have been small people to begin with, but still, they kept the doors small to keep heat and uh, cool air in to try to preserve heat in the winter and of course keep it cooler in the summer. Up above the doorway you can see there's a hole which allowed smoke from the fires to escape. Yeah, that's amazing. And inside the dwellings, you can see that there is a lot of smoke inside. You can see that the walls are blackened with charcoal from all the fires. Yeah, oh, this is just amazing. People lived here 800 years ago, 900 years ago. As you're walking along the canyon here, looking in the cliffs, you see a lot of dwellings. They're just all over. It's amazing. Hundreds of people would have lived here at its peak, which again was a very short period of time. <laughs> 